Here is Vladimir Putin on the night after his recent re-election in a campaign where no credible opponent was allowed to run. He's attending a Moscow rally to celebrate the 10th anniversary of his annexation of Crimea, the first part of Ukraine he invaded and occupied in 2014. They sing the anthem and songs imploring the audience to come to the aid of the motherland and support the Russian troops fighting now to take over more of Ukraine. Putin's message used to be that Ukraine was a separate country that had been taken over by Nazis. Now he says there never was a separate Ukraine, that the occupied Ukrainian territories are only returning to where they belong that they were always part of Russia. Putin's message is amplified every day by propagandists on Russian TV, like Putin's former prime minister, Dmitry Medvedev. When one of the former leaders of Ukraine said that Ukraine is not Russia, Вот эта концепция должна исчезнуть навсегда. Украина – это, безусловно, Россия. You can also encounter Putin's favorite themes on Moscow street signs and in Russian street interviews. Потому что это исконно русские земли. Украины такой вообще не было никогда. Была окраина России, да. Только это исторические, исконно вот русские земли были. Are they using the same, in particular, propaganda strategies? And what do we think they're going to do as a result? In Kingston, Ontario, Queen's University political scientist Ian Garner specializes in Russia and now teaches a course about Russian propaganda. The ordinary Russians have learned to speak the language of Putinism. We can detect, even amongst people who don't claim to be particularly fond of the regime, tropes, narratives, images and ideas that we can trace back directly to state propaganda sources. And that suggests that the propaganda is effective. Another Putin theme is that Russia had to attack Ukraine, otherwise Russia would have been attacked by the West. That too is repeated on the streets. Masha Lipman is a Russian journalist who fled the country at the time of the 2022 invasion. She thinks the Russian audience is very receptive to Putin's messages. I would say the main thing is that this is a defensive war that Russia is fighting against the evil West and first and foremost the United States. Russia is defending itself. It is not uh, comfortable for people to think that your country is evil and doing something wrong. The Internet 1420 channel mainly interviews ordinary Russians in the street. Airport. We have visited producer Daniel O'Rein several times in the last two years. He says he now has to interview many more people to find anyone who openly disagrees with Putin. I remember two years ago we needed 27 people and at least a couple of them will be like, I hate Putin, I hate this war and everything. Right now, 50 or more. But uh, a lot of people, even more people, uh, refuse to participate than before. Last summer, Russia unveiled a new history textbook for high school classrooms. Gone are any criticisms of Russian dictatorships past. Instead, there are glowing endorsements of the policies of Vladimir Putin and especially of his war on Ukraine. It is true that indoctrination in schools and colleges has become quite powerful and quite broad in Russia. And this has changed quite dramatically since the war. The indoctrination is done through uh, special classes of patriotism to teach Russians to be patriotic. And basically, patriotic means not to challenge the government policy. 
so I'm going to ask Russians. When the school year began, Daniel Orion found a few people to disagree with the textbook's assertion that the West is Russia's number one enemy. The ISIS attack on the Crocus concert hall in Moscow provided a window into the Putin propaganda model. It might have been seen as a huge security failure of his regime. But Putin quickly went on the air with the suggestion that Ukraine might somehow be involved. Shortly thereafter, one of his favorite TV propagandists, Margarita Simonyan of the Russia Today channel, blamed Ukraine without any qualification or evidence. Where Putin just simply raises a possibility, perhaps it was Ukraine. Another figure like Simon Yan will chip in right at the other end of the spectrum and say, no, it definitely was. And then we will find a chorus of voices along those, that spectrum until the state has established, as it seems to have done already, this was absolutely Ukraine, there is no doubt about it. Of course, the radical reception fed out by the propaganda machine is designed to distract people from an obvious central issue in the Moscow terrorist attack how despite multiple warnings, the Putin government did nothing to prevent it. This is a huge, gigantic failure, but uh, this is not, of course, how it is portrayed. Whether Russian law enforcement and whether Russian security services are efficient or inefficient, this is not what is uh, allowed to discuss in public. The people who buy the state's narrative will always outnumber those who don't because the state's control of mainstream media, but also online and digital media, which is far more significant in shaping opinion, is so strong and really so absolute and complete. Mr. President, thank you. On February 22, 2022, you addressed your country in a nationwide address when the conflict in Ukraine started. The Russian propaganda machine is not just aimed at the internal audience. Tucker Carlson's much discussed interview with Putin enabled the Russian leader to reach a wide international audience. When it comes to external Western audiences, being interviewed by Tucker Carlson, who has an enormous reach online, albeit not through mainstream media, allowed Putin to reach, I believe there's over 100 million views on X Twitter within a couple of days. That's an enormous amount of people. Russia also floods Western social media with disinformation through robot accounts. This year, Russia will attempt to influence elections in many democratic countries. It is absolutely time for Western governments to get real about how big this problem is and to understand once and for all that Russia isn't just tinkering around the edges of our society. It is deep in the heart of our political discourse. It is influencing elections. It in is influencing everyday behavior. And that means reframing our thinking, stopping Russian bots and trolls, stopping Russians' ability to actually post and disseminate information online before it arrives on in our spaces. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny provided a great counterpoint to the Putin propaganda apparatus. The death of Navalny is unquestionably a blow to the resistance movement in Russia. I think this was a hope that some people had uh, that someday he would be released or something will happen. He will uh, emerge once again free and independent and strong and unafraid. Uh, but now this person is no more. And uh, of course this will have a uh, depressing effect and al of, uh, already has had a depressing effect on people. <laughs> Ну, он и так практически пожизненный президент. Мне кажется, уже как-то э, перемен требует наши сердца. Two years ago, the younger generation in Russia was generally much more skeptical about Putin's war in Ukraine. But his school indoctrination programs are designed to change that over the years ahead. И все это происходит благодаря вам. Resistance in Russia 
is slowly but surely being overwhelmed by the Putin propaganda machine.